I think that people feel more comfortable now. They're like, oh, actually, do you know that my cousin plays for this place? Or yeah. like, and when we were we were looking for tickets for the semi final. Oh yeah, it, <laughs> I know. <laughs> and, <Good> one. <laughs> okay, I had a fine day. Out. Look, she had a fine day hours. <laughs> Hello and welcome to Girls With Goals. I'm Neve Marr. I am delighted to welcome my guest to studio today. I've got a little bit of a cold. I feel like I just need to put that out there first in case anybody that's listening is like, mmm, Neve's been out. That's not the case at all. Although some people do like that kind of tone. Like so cheetah. That little huskiness. Yeah. I digress. Okay, so our guest today, artists and theatre makers Vicky Curtis and Anya O'Hara are with me on the show. You're very welcome. Thank you Hi, so much you for coming us. in. Thanks for having us. Delighted to talk to you guys. Delighted to talk about the show. So uh, there's a show, Dublin Fringe. We're going to get to that later on. But first off, we're going to start the way that we start every show, and that's with our game. So it's called Six Words or Less, and it's for... Any of our listeners or readers of her or viewers now of the show as well who may not know who you are, so you have to describe yourself in six words or less. It's so easy, <laughs> but I keep making people do it. It's fun. So, who wants to go first? Anya. <laughs> I'd love to go first. Yay. Um, arty, queer, mayo fun. I love that it's four. I love that. <laughs> Somebody just comes in and just throws my game Bye. out. <laughs> people are strict about the six words. Look. But or less is in the name of the game. <laughs> I mean, you put it in there. I really did, you can yeah. Use it. Um, I love that. We've got, uh, and I'm sure that we've had people from Mayo on the show before, but Definitely. the fact that you're wearing your jersey as well. <laughs> Gotta represent. You're, you are. Our boss, Noel McGarry, is going to be a huge <laughs> fan of this episode of Girls with Goals. <laughs> so we're excited to talk about Mayo. Vicky, six words or less. Uh, dub, queer, dyke, outspoken word artist. Well, she kind of nailed it yeah, there, no. didn't she? She's you? a poet. I'm yeah. just like... That's <laughs> uh, my Twitter bio, so, you know. Is that your Twitter bio? I think so, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> People do that as well. I feel like that might be cheating. Um, so I suppose I want to talk a little bit about your own career separately mm -hmm. first before we get into mm -hmm. um, the collaboration and what you guys are doing together. Um, so I suppose growing up, did you both know that you were going to go into kind of an artist community is that where you were being drawn to creatively when you were young um I guess when I was when I was younger my mom sent me to speech and drama classes because she didn't want me to have an accent as such cool. uh she was a hairdresser so I had to answer the phone all the time so like yeah. little Vicky <laughs> on the phone being like hell yeah was that really a good look so she sent me to speech and drama classes which then I just ended up doing um for like 15 years then um so I just sort of fell in not fell into it but my love grew and grew for it then because that was, was something I was always doing, working my way up through all the different grades and yeah. everything. Um, so then when I finished when I finished all the speech and drama classes, um, I was working in television, so it was a kind of a creative outlet. Mm -hmm. But I felt that I wasn't, uh, that I could create more. Um, so I went into writing uh, short plays for the Dublin Gay Theatre Festival. Mm -hmm. So it was just kind of from that growing up, going to speech and drama, and then, you know, being creative and trying to like find a source for it or an outlet for it. Yeah, I always find like, you know, when people talk about finding that outlet and sitting down and kind of writing something, is it that you're walking down the street and you get an idea for a play and then you decide to sit down and write it? Or like, what's the process for you personally, Vicky? For me personally, well, I, I predominantly I work, I do work in theatre and have uh, pro uh, produced, written and performed in quite a lot of uh, theatre pieces, but my main form is spoken word. Mm -hmm. So when I'm when I'm like walking down the street and an idea comes to me, it's usually around social justice issues. So I've done a lot of work around repeal, marriage equality. Mm -hmm. um, so that was kind of where I was finding that I was able to use my voice because I was, you know, I was writing these things and then I was getting asked to perform more and more. So it was kind of, that was my niche then. Yeah. To say like I wouldn't be getting up and doing a love poem, you know. Right. It's more, you know, what's going on in the world? What have we got to change? How can we change it? Or calling the government out and yeah. that kind of, that kind of that kind of stuff. So that's where my ideas would come from is like, where, what am I, what am I seeing around me? How can we change it? How can I be creative around those issues? Yeah. I want to talk more a little bit about, um, spoken word as well, because it's kind of like a community that is, is really starting to, to make waves at mm -hmm. the moment. I mean, I think that for a while, 
um, not that, you know, obviously it wasn't a medium, but I don't think it was getting as much coverage as mm. it is now, which mm. is incredible. <laughs> um, but Anya, what about yourself? What about you growing up? What did you, what did you want to be? I love like, that question. Literally, there's this, I remember once we had a substitute teacher in like my tiny school and I was about like six and he was like, what do you want to be? And I was like, I want to be an artist. Yeah. And like my parents being like, what are you? But it, it's such a rural area, like the place that I'm from. And all the kind of all summers, it would just be me and my sister by ourselves. Yeah. And our parents, like my dad's quite artistic and really into reading about art and had all these books around the house, like paintings and stuff. And he would just be like, you know, here's a load of markers, here's some paper, can you just... Yeah. And that was kind of our like entire activity for three months every year. Yeah. Um, and we were both just obsessed with the drawing and painting and creating and like making up these sort of little stories for ourselves and putting on like little plays for ourselves. And my dad did a lot of um, community drama mm -hmm. and we used to be around like kind of, you know, the hall when, when the play would be on and we'd get to go backstage and it was like this really exciting thing. Yeah. The set and everything yeah. like that backstage, yeah. It's like getting to like peek behind the scenes. Yeah. And it was an it was atmosphere just, as well. Yeah, it's really mm. exciting and it, it, it was just such a huge part of our life. Um, and it kind of was never a question for me. It was always like, okay, I'm going to do art, like mm. whatever it is, I'm going to do art. Um, and got like a great amount of support from my dad in that in like because he kind of like was just didn't have enough money mm -hmm. and then he would have loved to do art as well so he was kind of like yeah do it you know pursue yeah. um, and was really really supportive um, and then so I was like it, it was literally from about age six I was like yep gonna be an artist oh, wow. so um, you know, it was new. yeah uh, there was like no other yeah <laughs> I was just like this is what I'm interested in I mean I suppose it's it's one of those things that you know, it's great when you have supportive family members yeah. who are like, yeah, absolutely, kind of go for it. Yeah. But also, I, I think sometimes, and I've had a lot of artists on mm. the show um, from, from lots of different uh, mediums, and I suppose there's the whole thing of like, am I going to be able to actually turn this over and make yeah. some money and, and pay yeah. the electricity bills? Yeah. That's always something that you kind yeah. of in the back of your head. have to consider essentially yeah. um but presumably like you know you went to college did you go to yeah, college so or I did, yeah I went to IDT um and studied visual art right and kind of at the same time as that I joined Dublin Youth Theatre because mm -hmm. I'm obsessed with youth theatre and had been in it in Mayo and it's like such a great way to meet people and I was yeah. like okay I'm gonna do it join it when I come up here it's a kind of cut off is like 21 so I had about three years in Dublin um and I joined DYT and then kind of was like working on my visual art practice out in IDT and then meeting all these theatre people in mm. uh, DYT and was kind of like, I can do both of these things at the same time and got really interested in design and performing and kind of they, ha they have like a lot of resources and give you a lot of opportunities to write your own work and um, design room work and kind of put it on. Yeah. And that really started my like, I was always interested in theatre, but that kind of I was like, oh, wow, I can actually do this. And all of my kind of visual art yeah. work is really relevant here and is like a kind of fresh perspective in this um, theatre world. And then I was like, hmm. I, and then I got lots of ideas for design and started working on fr with friends, yeah. just making our own shows um, for DYT and designing them. And then was just like, yeah, this is kind of something I'm really, really interested in. Yeah. Um, and then when I finished in IDT, I was like, okay, yeah, I really like design for theatre. So I, I, I did a master's in the Lear in um, st design for stage, um, which was really, really good. And yeah, I kind of just started working more sort of in, in backstage roles then. Yeah. Well, I like, kind of continuing along with my own work because I do um, live art and performance as well. Um, I kind of do that alongside design I mean artists do about 12 different jobs yeah I mean I, I kind of like f I found that out when yeah. I was researching the two of you <laughs> yeah. like it's not necessarily one thing that you can say like it is all encompassing yeah. but do you remember um Vicky the first performance that you put on yourself and do you remember I always like to know that kind of we were talking about the atmosphere backstage mm. there a little bit but do you remember feeling anxious or nervous or about like Will anybody come? Will they like yeah, it? Yeah, there's always that. But I, yeah, there's always that. Especially oh, re God. recently, when we've been, um, <laughs> we always have the moment of why yeah. am I doing this? And then you're like, no, it's for a good reason. <laughs> we like it's yeah. for a good reason. And um, when I'm performing spoken word, I just kind of tend to get up and do it, mm -hmm. and it's go. I get really nervous afterwards. Really? <sighs> yeah, I, like kind of get sometimes sick afterwards and everything. Everyone has stage. Yeah. Before. Right beforehand, yeah. but I have this kind of weird. I'm like, I can't talk to anybody. 
I, I, I guess it's the medium that I work in because like say with um with my theatre, it's very much about documentary. It's mm. documentary theatre mm. and has been centred around my life yeah. and thing and incidences that have happened to me. So I get yeah, getting nervous afterwards because I know people are going to come up and yeah. they'd be like, it, it still happens. I did it with the show myself and Anya. I, I, the conversation went gone mad started. Yeah. Uh, it was about death and grief and these two massive deaths and grief that happened to me over a 10 year period. And like, I still get some people coming up to me saying, I saw that show and then they go into their story. Yeah. And it's really like, it's like, it zaps the energy out of you. And that's yeah. what I get really nervous about. I'm mm. like, oh, what am I going to hear now tonight? Yeah. Like, I just have to run off after the show or That's anything. what I was going to ask. Yeah. Would you prefer literally there just to be like a, a door out the back of every <laughs> yeah. single theatre and then just get into your car and go? Yeah. Like a moving car and yeah. just jump way, into it, it. Yeah, it's not like you're getting up and doing Shakespeare and everybody's no. like, that line, you delivered that yeah. great. And then like... You perform that very well. It's so personal that it can be really like, and I love it. I love people Mm. sharing my stories with me. That's like part of what I why I do this. Mm. Like is to get stories out there and people talking. Mm. But it's just it can be very exhausting and like especially if you're like going really down and deep and dark. You like you know running off the stage and getting sick is like was you know kind of a priority during that show yeah. and then oh, putting my head down and not seeing anybody yeah. there's also the you know adrenaline that's probably coursing yeah. through your body as well and then the that's next, a great buzz and when you come <laughs> off though like you know there's that come down and I remember like I was in DCU and I used to I was part of the drum stock mm-hmm. made like amazing friends and just yeah. was obsessed with it but the come downs after shows are real like as yeah. in you're spending all of these time with people, you're spending hours of the day. The performances are, are relatively short compared to the amount yeah. of work that's gone into yeah, it. Totally. Like yeah, totally. And then afterwards, you're just like, well, it's Wednesday, What what's happening? Like, cool. what, <laughs> yeah. what am I supposed yeah. to do? Yeah, yeah like then you've obviously been putting two years, like yeah. we've been yeah. putting two years into this. Yeah. You know, it's mm. like how much work has go- gone in and mm. like we're on stage in like 12 days or something and it's like, <laughs> Oh, oh my word! And like yeah. the come down is going to be real because we won't have any oh championship God, yeah. like all yeah. Ireland champions. Not to be watching. There's not to be watching. I know. Yeah. There's going to be a big. I'm going to talk now. I know. Like <laughs> again, if anybody's watching, um, there are GAA jerseys present, and I want to get to the show. But first off, we've kind of learned a little bit about you know your your separate journey. So when did you guys meet, and kind of how did the collaboration begin? Well, uh, I was. I was working on a show that Vicky um, had written and was performing in Dublin Fringe mm-hmm. um, a few years ago. Um, I was stage manager, was I? Yeah, yeah. I was stage, stage manager. Kind of designed, kind of designed much it. design yeah. in the show, but and I let it only ever see the chairs. Yeah, I was in charge of the chairs. <laughs> yeah. and other massive. Things. That's massive. <laughs> it's like, are they the right chairs? Yeah, they're the right yeah, chairs. Yeah, I was like, you know, I trust you. Yeah. <laughs> but um, I was like, you know, we had agreed on a certain amount of days for me to work or whatever mm-hmm. and I was like yeah no bother I'm free all those days and then sort of during the show um something came up and I was like Vicky I really really need the day off like, I was a bit raging I was, I was like, like I'm so sorry. sorry like this is so serious you know something has happened and I I can't work Saturday there's no way and she was like are you okay like what's wrong um and I was like well so you see Mayo and Dublin actually drew the week before and they were in a replay on the Saturday and I, and she I didn't, like, didn't let her get to the end of the sentence and I was like did you get a <laughs> And she was like, I didn't. Yeah. Like, no. But I was like, because y- y- you don't have a lot of those conversations in the theatre and you're kind of keeping it quiet to yourself and you're like listening to the match on your headphone or whatever. Yeah. And you never, you don't, you don't expect people to be like, oh my God, yeah. so you're you, going to the match? You, you had never, d- no. We'd never discussed about the guy no. or GAA, you know, it was always art or, yeah. you know, are you like, does the chair look good over yeah. here? You know, what do you think about the lights or? We have um, our own like, like, ideas about what people are going to like yeah. if they like theatre or like yeah yeah and then when she said and I was like what are you on the match <laughs> and like because you'd never see you'd never <laughs> see somebody in a theatre space wear a gal no. jersey yeah so it was like you know that's, that's not a conversation that happens yeah so the cat was out of the bag yeah this was it <laughs> Dublin Mayo Dublin fans. one yes. she was like okay you can go look. <laughs> look can we just I had a nice day out <laughs> <laughs> that's all that matters <laughs> Everybody had a nice yeah. day out. <laughs> Noel McGarry had a great <laughs> day at the match. That's all we need. That's all. We, yeah, exactly. Um, but obviously, you know, the match happened. Yeah. And uh, you came back to to working on the show or whatever. So, was it that the conversations just then kind of started between the two yeah. of you? Of like, yeah. obviously, you'd found this 
Yeah, we were then like we'd be we'd be working on other people's things. Mm -hmm. Like people would bring us into the room, and we'd be talking and like I'd be like, "Oh, did you see the match? Or yeah. did you watch the Sunday game? <laughs> Wasn't that gas about the thing?" And people would be like, "All our the theater people or art pals that we were like." What are you two talking about? Yeah, what what match? is a match? <laughs> Do like, you like soccer? Is yeah, this a rugby like, thing? Yeah, mm. and we were like, no, <laughs> you know. And then because of the natural Dublin Mayo rivalry mm, yeah. that has happened over the years, um, we were like, hang on, why haven't we seen a yeah. show about the ga? Have you seen any art about yeah, ga ever? Like, you know, we were like, yeah. maybe. Like, maybe we should talk about yeah. this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How do we talk about this? Yeah. You know, and and so that's the... kind of how the conversation yeah. Yeah, so, began. Yeah, so the conversation was really around, like, so you're in an art space yeah. and you're saying you're going to the match and everybody in the art space is like, what? And then when you're at the match, like, everybody at the match is going, what the hell are these <laughs> two you? doing here? Like, <laughs> you know. Wow, so it's, it's almost like it feels unsettling in each space. Yeah. Okay. Um... <laughs> I want to talk more about the actual show, but I suppose in terms of the ga, uh, Conan's going to kill me for saying ga. <laughs> we right, said it, it's I, fine. I just have to ask this question, right? Because the show is called Ga Mad, yeah. right? And that's how you would say it as opposed yeah. to GAA Mad. Now, yeah. I was very cautious to <laughs> say you. GAA Mad um, when Vicky and Anya were coming in because the lads on Sports Show do give me a terrible time yeah. if I ever say yeah. ga inadvertently. Yeah. And I used to work in radio and I would be broadcasting sports and the odd time ga would slip yeah. out and the text would roll in, it's G <laughs> dot A dot A. Well, actually it's CLG, but we won't get into that. Let's not get, <laughs> in, let's, let's not get into it, Vicky. Um, but yeah, so GAA fans sometimes don't like it being called ga, but you guys are obviously okay with it. Yeah, yeah well, so well, when, we were, when we've been writing the script, there's moments where we refer to the GAA, which mm. is G, full stop, yeah. A, full stop, A, yeah. full stop. And that refers to the sport and it refers to all the official dumb yeah. around mm. it. Kind of organisation. Yeah. So what we're, we're talking about is the GA, which is everything. It's like yeah. Garth Brooks, Crow Park, you know, the that, culture, that, like, the culture yeah. you know, Spice Girls knock, being knocked <laughs> off number one by a, G, by a GA song. Yeah. You know. Yeah. The sheep being painted, like yeah. it, that's the guy. You see that you know, as like, like all the stuff around it. It's not kind of the official. So it's everything, yeah. yeah. And so tell me when your own individual loves of the GAA <laughs> <laughs> began. Yeah, the guy. When did you start loving the guy, Anya? Well, like you can't live in my own. It just happens to you. Okay. Like it just, <laughs> it's all everyone talks about. It's like, you know, it's you know how people talk about the weather or whatever yes. when they meet people. We talk about the guy. Like we talk about Mayo. We talk about who's retiring, who the new manager is going to be, what's happening with the Mayo ladies. Like we never stop talking about it. I'm it's just. I, I don't know whether it's because I'm looking at you in this Mayo jersey now, but I'm just thinking about Mayo now as a place just filled with Mayo jerseys. I mean, kind off of. season two. Oh just yeah, everyone just rolling like around, these flags everywhere yeah. all the time. You know, we okay. we don't stop because the season is over. So it was always there. Yeah, I mean, my as family much as love art it. for you. Yeah, it just you know we'd always be watching the match. My my mom has like a big family and they're all really into it so we'd be always like driving up to Dublin going to the matches like planning for the whole summer you know trying to get a ticket like from when I was a really small kid just and having like, a great day just having a nice day out. and me and my sister <laughs> tried to play but we were both not okay. very good so we, we did try but so you can support and not play yeah though. yeah yeah absolutely <laughs> just Vicky, a yeah Vicky what about you in terms um, of the so I had a job when I was a teenager as a runner on the Sunday game, which in so hindsight cool. was like, <laughs> like wow. <laughs> but at the time I was just making teas and coffees yeah. and um, obviously we'd be in Crow Park a lot. And it was back in the day when health and safety, you know, people were allowed to run on the, ma on the pitch. Yeah. And so I used to be able to watch the match uh, on the pitch. Um, on the corner of the Hogan and Hill because mm. uh, I didn't have anything to do until like <laughs> half time you know or until like yeah. the middle bit of yeah. the show mm. so I'd be sitting there and I'd just be like watching the hurling being like oh my <laughs> word what <laughs> is this <laughs> and like you know you know South County Dublin we don't really have a tradition of um, GAA it's like mm. it's rugby and yeah that kind of stuff so I didn't really know anybody growing up who played mm. it uh, I was in a girls' school in Bray, but it was a very new, brand new girls' school, so we didn't actually have any sports facilities. I mean, I sure may have fallen in love with it then, yeah. if we had had it, but it was 
on the cor corner of the pitch between Hogan and Hill that I was like absolutely mad about it. And because I was in that position um, of being a runner, the you know, the pundits, mm. they all explained the rules to me, right. like, oh and explained what amazing. was going on. So my love just grew and grew and grew. And then it'd be like, I'd just be like going for a drive on a Sunday just to listen yeah. to the match because like that was my favourite thing to do. It was like yeah, hear it yeah. and listen to it. Um, yeah, so it grew, grew from there. And then I'd be kind of, because I wasn't affiliated with a club or anything, mm. I wouldn't really go to that many matches. Yeah. I'd try and go to some matches, you know, if I could, you know, if they were like in Parnell Park or anything, yeah. but I'd, I'd just be at the match by myself, just being yeah, like, yeah, yeah. and everybody would be like, the hell is she doing? <laughs> like, <laughs> but it, that's, how I, that's how I fell in love with it. Mm -hmm. Like, I was in a very, like, hindsight, very lucky position where yeah. it's like, oh my God, I can't imagine. Imagine. Yeah, like every time well, you 18, say the Sunday game, yeah, I'm like, oh, and you're like, yeah, like little 18, Quite 19 year old Vicky being there going, oh, I have to make so coffees jealous. now. But I'll just I'll watch this, like on the corner of oh the pitch. God. Yeah, it sounds almost like the two of your like lives and careers. It's like one line of, you know, uh, art and creative and, mm. and theatre stuff. And then just this absolute massive love <laughs> yeah. for GAA yeah. as well. Yeah. But obviously what you guys are doing with this show is that you're you're bringing it together because you know, I would say when you moved to Dublin and stuff like that, you integrated into the into the youth theatre and stuff. Yeah. But presumably you didn't have a lot of people maybe in that sphere who were willing to go to games zero. with you. <laughs> yeah, okay. So zero. So this yeah. is it. Um, but one of the things about the show that you say is you want to explore Irish identity mm -hmm. through your love for art and GAA. So this yeah. is this is where it gets really interesting to me because it's not necessarily just about you guys individually. Mm -hmm. it, you're looking at the whole thing mm -hmm. as as a culture, right? Yeah. 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 Tell us about that. <laughs> like, well, that's a it's monster. A, it's a big old thing. It's a yeah. monster. So what we were talking like what we we're aiming to talk about that is that, you know, as queer people, how do we see ourselves within the GA mm. when we haven't really been represented before? Yeah. And also with all the background noise of Brexit and everything, like the GA is an all island, all island sport. There's mm -hmm. no borders around it or anything. So it is, you know, it's a, for our island. Yeah. It is one thing that really does join us together. So it, that, it's that identity. And then it's the being an outsider, being a queer person within that. And what is that? And why mm -hmm. can't we get in there? Or why haven't we been seen in there yeah. before? Mm -hmm. And they are doing things, the GAA are doing things around that we've discovered yeah. and they've been you know they've been commenting commenting on it recently so it, it's about exploring that it's about as queer irish women mm. where do we see ourselves yeah. in this island where do we fit? Like, do you know we... where do we fit you know in the yeah. country the rural yeah. urban divides and and things that happen and you know it's then we see the gaa and we're like wow this is like there's over 2200 clubs in the country yeah. you know what can they do what can they like actually yeah bring it all together. They have a huge they have infrastructure kind of in place already. So, you know, they have they have this huge power. They already have this set up. Yeah. So if they're open to working with queer people and it, it would give, especially in rural areas, you know, it's kind of like safe havens for people. Yeah, because I kind of wanted to ask, did you feel like when you were younger, not obviously mm. so much now because, you know, you're, you're doing a show about it and obviously you're very proud of, mm. of being queer and being mm. gay fans. Yeah. But when you were slightly younger going to matches and stuff, was it something yeah. that you were aware of and did it, did it make you feel a little bit, like not self-conscious, but yeah. like that, just not feeling necessarily like everybody else there? I think there was definitely a time for me, maybe up until I was like, in my early 20s, I would be like very conscious of how I dressed and how I looked yeah. and what what that was saying about me and kind of conscious about outing myself in, mm. in those kind of spaces. Um, but th I think that a lot of that fear comes from rural Ireland and it being so isolated. And if you are a queer person, say in a very rural area, yeah. you might be the only one. Yeah. And then it just naturally happens that you feel like an outsider because you don't know anyone else like you. You don't see anyone else like you. So then the matches especially going like with the male gang I'm like oh wow you're all probably against me you know then they might not be no, but yeah. just because you haven't you don't recognize anyone in in that crowd you're like there's mm. no are there any gay people here probably not yeah and and or they haven't kind of come out themselves yeah you do feel really isolated and I did for a long time just kind of hide 
uh, you know, try and kind of fit in as much as I could. Yeah. Really work. But that's, I mean, that's kind of like every, every yeah. mm. everybody wants to fit in. If you say that yeah. you, you don't want to fit in, like obviously it's it's great to be yourself and stuff, but yeah. but naturally as, as a human, you want to get along with the people who yeah. are literally standing next to you. Yeah. Do you know yeah. what I mean? That's kind yeah. of one, of, one yeah. of the things. And I mean, the beautiful thing about the gaff for me anyway was like a, it gave me this connection because there, other than like my dad, my sister, mm. in my wider family, people wouldn't be that into art or theatre. Yeah. And... Uh, they're all mostly very straight and you know we didn't have a lot in common and this kind of sport gave me a connection gave me a, a something to talk about and yeah. a common a shared interest with lots of my family that I kind of wouldn't have much in common with otherwise yeah. like um, and, and what about the opposite of it like what about bringing the ga to the theater community mm -hmm. like what what about that what are your friends and colleagues it's been really fun and people like first off did they say that you were mad or like, <laughs> or, or what? Now, honestly, I wasn't planning on saying that. That just sure. happened. Yeah, I swear. Um, but yeah, you know, what was the reaction from, from the opposite side of it? Uh, well, we, so when we had the idea, we applied um, for Smock Alley's initiative, Seen and Heard, mm -hmm. which is a work in progress festival that mm -hmm. happens for three weeks at the beginning of every year now. Um, which is brilliant because great, it gives yeah. artists an opportunity to put a show on, yeah. nugget of an idea, see if it works, if it doesn't work. So we did Gamad mm. uh, 1, as we're calling it, Gamad 1, um, in Seen and Heard at the beginning of 2018. And so lots of our theatre pals came and yeah. um, lots of GAA people came as well. And what, so you get feedback mm. um, from the audience, which is great. And what it what the general feedback was, theatre people learnt about the ga. Yeah. And they were like, wow. Oh my word. They were like, This is great. Yeah. They were like, you didn't This realize is realize it was so dramatic. Yeah, dramatic and, yeah. and all the characters and the costumes <laughs> and colours and like yeah. sound effect, you know. They were like, It's so like Crow Park is the biggest yeah. stage. Yeah. And then we had GA ga people come in to see the show because they were like, Oh, this is a nice little show yeah. about ga. Mm. And they were like I actually booked tickets then for something else. Yeah, like, like right. I see a connection between the two. The, like. Yeah, they they were figuring it out that like yeah, the two do live in the same yeah. sphere, kind of. Yeah, because it's there a is show. A I mean, yeah, it is a it? show. It is a show. Crow, Crow Park. Park on game day. Oh my god, is like, a show. the excitement. And you have the people like I mean the fair weather fans and stuff that come out with bells and whistles <laughs> as well. And you know, you, you can't even say that that's a bad thing because no. it's incredible. Why wouldn't you want to experience that? It's a celebration, that? Yeah, like, it is, yeah. it's well, a celebration it's, and yeah. it's a tribal drive and it's like, yeah. yes, we're, we're like going for the underdog, experience. anything but the dubs, you know, it's yeah. like, and like, the, you know. Carry for some. Yeah, and all, the, all those, like, the Mayo cars that are coming up oh painted god, in the Mayo yeah. colours and People like it their faces is and the hats and oh my god and everybody's yeah. like oh no it's just sports fans and it's like no it's, it's so theatrical dramatic I can't actually magic. believe this hasn't been done before <laughs> yeah, like right? been, there's been shows in theatre spaces but have been set in yeah a ga world, yeah, but it hasn't been about the gods being yeah. maybe you know Timmy Creed splice, yeah, yeah. It's like mental health and men and in, in toxic the masculinity yeah, and stuff absolutely. like that. But there has never, we don't, we no, haven't, we, we, we haven't seen it, yeah. and we looked um, <laughs> quite hard. Yeah. Um, so yeah, we're like, this is a celebration of yeah. the ga of Irish pride, of queerness, of being an outsider and being a part of a tribe as well. I've had so many people like come out to me as ga fans yeah. since we started yeah. talking about it. Like I've been in a couple of like theater theater people, theater people who are like closeted oh, yeah, ga fans. Hi. Like yes, Stop. we can talk about this. This is amazing. I was at like a get in for a show I was doing like a month or two ago yeah. and my friend Joe was there and he was like oh are you watching the hurling he's from Kilkenny and he like he's like oh come on come on come on and we were like in the corner of the theatre watching the match it sounds so ridiculous like yeah you it like that but and but I think that people feel more comfortable now they're like oh actually do you know that my cousin plays for this place or yeah. like and when we were we were looking for tickets for the semi-final oh yeah it was, <laughs> I know who um, won <laughs> okay I had a fine day out. Look, she had a fine day <laughs> out. But like all of our kind of theatre pals and like the theatre community in Dublin were Where on Twitter. was like, get can we get them a ticket? A ticket. Yeah. Yeah. I'd run into them in Temple Bar. They'd be like, Anya, are you sorted? Do you have a ticket? Did you get tickets? Like, we, we got did. tickets. Okay. We My mum got them. Fair play to me. Amazing. <laughs> yeah, but, but yeah. they're all like really, really supportive and interested in it now. We're yeah. turning them all over. 
It sounds so exciting. And like, okay, so I need to talk a little bit about it. So September 9th mm -hmm. is when it's starting yeah. Yeah. and it's running until the 21st. Yeah, is that 20, right? 16 performances, 14 days. Wow. Come and join nice. us. Nice. Yeah, it's going to be fun. I'm not really sure which camera we're looking at there. But um, talk to me about like what people can expect from the show. I mean, we've kind of covered that. But like yeah. when you guys were sitting down to write it, like, you know, I think talking about this, it's such a natural thing to have a conversation about mm. because I feel like the two communities just really merge. Yeah. But when you were really like sitting down to write it, like tell us a bit about what that first scene is. Like what people can expect without giving too much yeah, away. Yeah, we don't want to. No don't spoilers. give too much away. We'll make you laugh. We'll make you cry. <laughs> is how I've been saying it. Yeah, we'll make you laugh. Yeah. We'll make you cry. The first scene is, um, the first few minutes are like a drunk history of the gap. <laughs> <laughs> That's like, here you go. It was many many years. Here are all the things that yeah. happened from the tawn to like. Last this, week. This Sunday with the All-Ireland Final. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, amazing. <laughs> yeah. That's a really good way to describe it. <laughs> if people don't book tickets and want to go see that, I don't know why, why they wouldn't. I mean, wouldn't. it's fun. <laughs> yeah, and tell me about the process that you guys will do now leading up to the show in terms of like, what, how much are you mm. rehearsing? When will the nerves really start to kick in? Should we get exactly. you a getaway car for afterwards? Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you could so, arrange that. Yeah. Um, I've... We've both got experience doing shows. We mm. both, uh, both I think, budgeted for mental breakdowns three weeks oh, out. Yeah. yeah. So right. that happened all last week. <laughs> okay. So that was we great. We got them sorted. And we were like, okay. oh, it's happened. Grand. We're okay now. And now Breakdown We away. have an amazing director, Neve McCann. Yeah. So she's very understanding. Um, she loves, she is now in love with the guy. <laughs> we took her to the match. Yeah, we oh, took amazing. her to the match. So, um, so, yeah, so it's all about, we're working. The show is on in Beauty's Cafe Theatre, so we've got this week in there rehearsing in the space, mm. blocking it out, mm -hmm. um, figure, figuring out where we are. Learning the lines. I mean, there's some cabaret numbers in it, though. Yeah. Oh, stop it. Yeah, yeah. Sorry. yeah. Oh, my God, I'm so excited. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's going to be fun. Oh, yeah, it's going to be. Yeah, it is. Oh. So it's like, make it queer. <laughs> make it make queer. It queer. We <laughs> I camp, love that. We camp it up. Amazing. Um, yeah, so it's all about just figuring that out. What logistically what, where we are predominantly yeah. what does not work. Yeah, right. yeah. Like sitting. Oh, why are we sitting here? Why? Yeah. Am I, why am I sitting here? This is. This feels really weird. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's just the niggly bits now, and yeah. right. really getting the lines down and working. On, it's funny because I've never worked with a director um, for my spoken word, mm. um, so it's been gas. Yeah. Having it's a, great. somebody, it's, it is great. Like, but she's like, "Do you want me to?" I'm like, "Yeah, please yeah, do," because yeah, yeah. I just want to experience me. this. I mean, if I don't like it, I'm not gonna do it. Yeah, <laughs> but it's being. But great. even just being given notes and stuff like yeah, that, yeah. and then kind of like adjusting. Yeah, to yeah, that. Because yeah. yeah. normally, like with spoken word, you just in a venue on a stage, you thing. have a microphone, yeah. like do a bit of you know that. Whereas, like, I really have to be like. Moving around yeah. or like throwing, like throwing, sh throwing shapes basically. <laughs> <laughs> it was like, it looks great. <laughs> okay, okay. It was like, you're throwing things. No. Ooh, no, no. Throwing shapes. Um, it sounds absolutely incredible. I'm so excited to see it. I 100% I'm going to go and I'm going to, I'm going to bring a bunch of people with me as well. Um, I'd say the, the lads in the back are definitely going to want to come as well because this has been just a really great chat. I loved learning about it. Where do you want to see the show go after Dublin Fringe? Do you guys have more aspirations mm. for us? So, Dream. yeah, we do. We have a few. We have a few. We've dreams. got a lot of dreams. Tell me your dreams. So, <laughs> so when we were at the beginning of the year, we like had done seen and heard, um, and then at the beginning of this year, um, we had received some incubation space from Dublin City oh, Council, mm. and we sat down and we said, what, do we want? "What are we going to do with this?" And we said, "We're not going to do it if we don't have any support." Yeah. So we. We applied for everything. Yeah. Oh my god! Trying Literally. to get money, you know, from here, there, <laughs> everywhere. Begging. Um, and then we were successful in receiving um, Dublin Fringe Festival, Irish Theatre Institute, and Fish Hamble, the new play company. They have an initi initiative called Duets, mm -hmm. which it, which is its first year, but it's a building on from the show in a bag um, model that they've been running for I think ten years or something. Yeah. So they've sort of rejigged it, where they invited two artists from two different mediums. To, co to collaborate, have they have an idea of collaborating? Yeah. So we were like, well, we collaborate. We collaborate. Yeah. We're from different so, mediums. Yeah. Yeah. So we applied for this bursary and uh, we got it. Amazing. Um, and there's another show as well, Sauce. So yeah. there's two shows in the duets program in Bewley's. So we, we got this. Yeah. And like our idea from this is we want to tour it yeah. and in association with hopefully. The dream is in association with, um, yeah, to do it in with Crow the Park. GA. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, 
to do it in association with like local theatres in you know um, counties all across the mm -hmm. country but we want to do them in gay clubs we that want would be to, the dream we want to do it in a GAA it club just sounds like the perfect the match yeah. doesn't it pardon the pun oh. yeah it's like <laughs> I'm probably going to have to edit those out because <laughs> they're so cringy. I'm going to so yeah. get in so much trouble for them. Um, but yeah, that's the thing. It would be sad to see, like there's going to be such a come down, yeah. at, you know, when the when the GA season kind of ends yeah. anyway. You'd want something to be doing. But like. this is, yeah, it would be it would be awful to see it just like stop at, mm. at Dublin Fringe. But that's not, you guys no, have no, big, no, we big really, dreams really for yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, it's not just, it's, this isn't just for a Dublin, yeah. a Dublin venue. No, it's I think it's really important as well to take these this kind of work outside of Dublin because yeah. we get, like, I'm like thinking of myself as a child and being like, imagine if I saw a show like this in my town. Yeah. You know, and what, what that can do in terms of queer representation and in terms of just like the type of art that uh, you get to see if you're yeah. in it from a rural area from you know, a place far from Dublin. It's kind of, it's an oxymoron though, because if you had seen a show like this, maybe you wouldn't have made a I show know. like this though as well. Maybe so. I'd be happier. But, yeah, <laughs> but it's, it's funny though, but yeah. um, yeah, that's, it's great to hear that, you, that you're going to hopefully bring it around yeah. the country TV well, show maybe. I, I'd watch it. Oh my you. God, yes. I, I would watch you I guys. I want to do a TV. podcast. We have, we've no <laughs> offers in yet, but like that's our If anyone that's wants to give us a lot do. of money. Yeah, and uh, this is going to be going out next week. So by then, you know. We'll be, Dublin. Look, I look. We I think we, by we then we Terry will have stopped the drive for five, and I'll be sleeping soundly. <laughs> well, we can't say. We can't say. Obviously, we'll because... be leading into the Dublin women's trying to beat Galway. Oh my God! Stop! They can't win. Train around. No. Around. <laughs> Um, yeah, we're, we're obviously, well, I'm, I'm up for Dublin, I'm a dub, so uh, it's, fine. it's fine. It's fine. But look, the main thing is everyone's going to have a great day. <laughs> great day. Yeah. Great, great day. day out. Everyone's going to have a great day. Um, can you tell me, before I let you go, where mm. people can go to find out more information about Gamad and where they can yeah. get tickets? Yeah, so you get it on fringefest.com. Mm -hmm. It's the Dublin Fringe Festival website. You can find out more about me on vickycurtis.com. And more about me on onyohara.com. VickyCurtis.com and OnyoHara.com. Thank you so much <laughs> for coming in. It's been an Thank absolute pleasure. Much. And I can't wait to see the show. Definitely. Really excited. Thanks, Thanks for having us. Thanks for